Hi, my name is Leon Monroe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this video where I answer the question on which supply or demand zone is going to hold. I get asked this question a lot. How do we know, how do I know which supply zone price is going to reverse from or demand zone price is going to reverse on? And the truth of the matter is that you never know which level it's going to reverse from trading is a uh, a game of probabilities you were just managing probabilities there's no certainties to ask that question means that you still are thinking about um certainty and guarantees no 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 we never know and no one ever knows unless you know you're an inside trader or something like that a major player in the game financial institution but you know, for retail traders, we never know which level of supply and demand prices will reverse at. But what we do know and what we can do at each level is do the, you know, some analysis, which I'm going to go through with you um, now. And uh, these are the things, some of the things that I think about when I'm looking at a level of supply or demand, in this case, supply as we're on the Aussie dollar um, chart and I do want to be short on this currency pair so I'm looking at a supply zone to in, in order to get short right so I'm going to go through my process so the first process I do um, every day every week is my fundamental analysis I need to know what currency pair is most likely to be the stronger and what is most likely to be the weaker and you can find that out by looking at a country's economic uh standing where they are in the business cycle and by the way if you uh want to understand fundamentals and sentiment in the way that i trade fundamentals and sentiment analysis the link is in the description box below uh if you go to the link it'll take you to this page and you have fundamental sentiment analysis trading course and then if you click on that uh, that link right there. After watching the analysis, you'll understand why I'll be bullish. The the, the dollar neutral slight bearish on the euro, etc. These are my ratings. So this gives me a great indication of what I should be buying and what I should be, you know, selling. And then I can, you know, conclude my uh, my currency pairs on which ones I should be buying and selling this does not include sentiment and risk sentiment this is purely based off of the uh, economic data that you'll learn um, in the course right so sentiment and you've got um, you know gross domestic product etc right so why do I want to be short this currency pair reason why is because <clears throat> if we're looking at the major economic indicators for example GDP growth you know, you've got 0 0.3 down from 0 0.9 from the Australian dollar. And if we look at the United States, right, United States, we've got uh, 3.4. So it's way above, even though it's down from 4.2, the, uh, the, the, the figure is uh, a lot higher than uh, GDP growth rate for the um, the Australian dollar, which is closer probably to a recession, I'm saying that they're going to go into a recession, but two negative quarters. Right, so minus one, minus two um, quarters uh, of um, negative growth is a recession. So you can see they're close to pretty much zero, whereas the United States, 3.4. You've also got in interest rates and inflation. Interest rates are 2.5 and interest rates are at 1.5. Inflation rate is at 1.9 and the uh, inflation rate is at 2.2. Overall, the United States um, out of the uh, major currencies <clears throat> that we trade is probably the uh, the one that's doing the best so I want to be a buyer of the United States dollar for now things can change also as well China I mean uh, Australia's economy is heavily affected by China and there is uh, talks of uh, Chinese contraction so if China contract and they continue to contract <clears throat> then the Australia the Australian dollar and the Australian economy is going to be highly affected by that as the Australian uh, dollar, um, China is Australia's main trade partner, meaning that they export a lot of their uh, their commodities <clears throat> like copper, iron ore to China. And if China 
are going into a contraction, that means that they're buying less of those commodities, which means Australia selling less to China, which then means that you'll have a knock on effect on the economy. So you always, first of all, want to look at fundamental analysis and why you want to be a buyer or a seller of a particular currency, particular currencies. So going back to now supply and demand, the technical side of things. All right. And what we know about um, supply and demand zones <clears throat> is that these are um, lower highs and lower lows. Supply zones are areas of potential value. What I mean by value, I mean there have been a potential bargain. We know lower highs, lower lows, not necessarily rally based drop, drop based rally. Right? I'm not saying that, it, that obviously that doesn't that doesn't work or whether it does work. <clears throat> but in the way that I trade supply and demand and I identify my supply and demand zones, um, you understand and you can look at watch the uh, the the beginner's guide to um, you know supply and demand. Again, the link is in the description box below. Um, that these areas, right? Lower highs, lower highs that lead to lower lows are potentially areas of supply. And again, we derive our bias from our fundamental analysis. So all I want to do is look at supply zones. I'm not looking at any demand zones. I'm only looking at supply zones because I'm looking to buy the US dollar, which means I'm looking to short this currency pair. So once prices come to a level, does that mean we should automatically now start to sell? Because we don't, you know, we were, we're looking at these uh, levels and this is the question that everyone asks. How do we know I want to try and get in here? Do I want to get in here? Do I want to get in here? Now, as prices yesterday led up to this first supply zone, one of the questions you have to, um, again, another question you have to ask yourself is, what is going to be the potential catalyst once price comes into this area as to why it's going to reverse. Now, we have the FOMC announcement, right? The Federal Open Market Committee announcement, right? In case you don't know what that is, it's a detailed record of the FOMC's most recent meeting, providing in-depth insights into economic and financial conditions that influence their vote on where to set interest rates, right? The market is driven by fundamentals. I don't care what anybody else says when they say, oh, technicals are be all and end all. Um, it's fundamentally and sentiment driven. And then we use technical analysis uh, to time really our entries and do, you know, um, the, the other stuff. But it should be fundamentally and sentiment driven because these are the guys that control, are trying to control prices, you know, the, the, the central banks. They're not looking at, you know, um, uh, uh, pin bars at levels of support and resistance, right? That's, that's nonsense. These are the guys that are looking at the overall economy. They're looking at the world economy and understanding um, and trying to, you know, um, balance, you know, monetary and uh, economic, or I say monetary policy, right, uh, of the, um, the US dollar, Right, and whether they should be hiking or cutting or holding interest rates, right? And then that obviously let, gives us a clue of which way we should be buying, um, you know, or or selling. So, what is going to be the catalyst that leads to this um, the supply level um, reacting and actually working? So, yesterday we had um, prices, you know, start to react right from this area but we know that we've got today FOMC meeting so why are you going to get short let's say for example this pin bar was your uh, your entry candle you have to then ask yourself a question of why you're getting short before the FOMC now sometimes you know you can get short you know pre um uh, news announcement, right? Pre catalyst, right? If you know there's going to be a high volatility uh, announcement which should drive the market in a certain direction, right? We don't know what the outcome of the FOMC is going to be, but you have to understand that you're getting in ahead of the news and price still has time to, you know, drift higher, drift lower. It's a game of probabilities, like I say. 
you never know for sure. And if you are going to get in, just a quick tip, if you are going to get in uh, before the news, and sometimes I do, then you have to understand that um, these things can happen. You can get stopped out pre-news, especially if you go enter in maybe a day or so, a couple of hours before, right? So what you want to do is maybe just enter half or a quarter of a position that you then you normally would just to manage your risk and then what you can do is um, understand the post trade so after the news comes out if you're already in it right then brilliant and then you can always add to the position right after the news comes out and if it's going in your favor right so we need to understand what the catalyst is going to be if any catalyst is going to come in right at this area if there's news events in the future right or at this level and then we decide whether we want to get in pre-news or pre-catalyst or post-catalyst and again the decision is up to you if you're getting in pre-catalyst just understand that you know uh, prices still can move against you right it's a probably a lower probability trade more of a gamble um, post obviously is uh, where the data comes out and then you can assess whether that is good for the uh, for your trade so again, we never know which level of supply, if any of these levels of supply is going to work out. Now, again, I'm not in this trade yet. I've just observed, right? I've known, obviously, the FOMC is coming out. And what I'm, what I'm personally going to do is I'm going to wait for FOMC to come out and then look to see if there is a candlestick uh, or candlestick pattern to get involved after the FOMC meeting and that could mean that prices could slowly drift up here today and then give me the candlestick that I need and then you know reverse or prices could you know um, not even reverse at any of these levels there could be a you know a surprise a shock the market could react differently and I never get the entry at these levels of supply but that doesn't mean that supply and demand doesn't work all it means is that i have to just be patient and buy the dollar at a higher level and a cheaper level a cheaper exchange rate because let me just delete these uh if this is a high and this is a low this changes to value range right we're looking to be a buyer of the US dollar, all this means, right, is that you're buying the US dollar for bargains and this being the high, this was a, an absolute bargain for the US dollar, hence prices ended up going all the way down here. Now, if prices do return, right, up to here, this wasn't seen as necessarily enough value, this wasn't seen as a, an absolute bargain, then we look for this area here, to look to get short but it's about patience it's about understanding the market as a whole what's going on behind the scenes the fundamentals the sentiment um being patient right you can't just start you know trading levels of supply willy-nilly right it's not how it's done otherwise you might as well just trade levels of support and resistance and this is the reason why traders end up um losing because they don't know which way they're supposed to be trading in the first place look and do your do, do your fundamental sentiment analysis first understand where there is going to be value potential value at exchange certain exchange rates and then if you see your entry trigger then you get in short providing you have obviously you know catalysts in your favor um hope you found this useful if you have any uh questions comments please leave them in the uh section box below and i will get back to you as soon as possible so take care and have a great trading day